Hi everyone, I am Koichi Fujino, a professor of American literature at Seinan Gakuin University, Japan. Today, I would like to have an interview with Dr. Chris Rieger, who is the author of the recent Faulkner study book titled Faulkner's Fiction, Gender, Race, Class, and Clothing from the Bloomsbury 2024. Thank you so much for your taking time. Thank you. For this interview, yes. Dr. Chris. And your book is the first book, maybe, the book length study of clothing and dress across William Faulkner's novels and short stories. This impressive book has a fascinating cover, and I love it. And now I would like to have some simple questions on this book's contents. Maybe it is a good introduction for your audiences, maybe. Uh, Chris, how do you feel about this book now? I was uh, very pleased to get the book finished uh, before mm -hmm. I changed my career. So, yeah. uh, so that was very nice um, for me to have that as a, a, final, a final achievement in my academic career. Uh, I think the book came out well. As you said, the cover is, is wonderful and the, the people at Bloomsbury Press are responsible for the cover and they did a fantastic job mm -hmm. with the cover, I think. Uh, the book itself tries to look at clothing from a few different perspectives in many of Faulkner's uh, most well-known novels, but also some of his lesser-known novels right. and, and in quite a few short stories as well, too which are not always written about in the book-length studies of Faulkner. Sometimes the short stories get lost, I think. So I tried to include several of those. So I, I look, as the title says, it, it's connecting clothing to gender and race and class um, in different chapters. And it's interesting to use um, fashion studies and clothing studies perspectives to bring into literary study uh, to see how, how powerful clothes can be and the, the symbolic uh, character and symbolic meanings that clothing can have. But also the book tries to look at clothing not just as symbols, but as objects in and of themselves, which have their own sort of power mm -hmm. and even agency, mm -hmm. uh, even though they are non-human things. Right. So I, I use some, some insights from um, different philosophical areas such as uh, thing theory and object-oriented on ontology um, and, and uh, writers like Bruno Latour mm -hmm. to try to look at clothing as um, objects that have uh, power and meaning in and of themselves and not only as symbolic, um, a symbolic sign that humans That's can true. interpret. I, I feel that in today's philosophical currency, mm -hmm. it seems that some philosophers thinking that our existences are not so much on the existence things, but also uh, we are actually relying on the relationships mm -hmm. rather than the things, rather than actually the relationship, For, uh, especially that some French philosophers are beginning to believe in such a kind of a way. Mm -hmm. So it, I think that uh, your idea is a very new or kind of the uh, go along with today's currency of the philosophy. And also at the same time, you are actually uh, humanize it in a way. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, you uh, make the things into a little more humanized one, you, you think? Yes. Uh -huh. um, I think that's the point of some of those philosophies is that uh, the, d the divide that we usually have in Western philosophy between subject and object right. is yeah. maybe not so clear cut as we often have assumed it is. Yeah. And that things have the power to act on our lives as yeah. humans. It's not only humans who are acting on other humans or that's on right. things, but it can work the other way as well too. And there's Lot, some, some examples in the introduction of the book of different systems and things that influence humans uh, every day and also things in Faulkner's fiction besides clothing that have a similar effect but 
clothing was so prevalent. Once mm -hmm. I started seeing it in Faulkner's work, I saw it everywhere. Yeah. And so I think it's one of his major items and things that he uses uh, to different effects throughout his whole entire career. Right. So from today's, uh, uh, from your point of view, it seems like a kind of the objects or some kind of the, you know, the clothes and see these things are a kind of the, you know, they have uh, some kind of the agency mm -hmm. in a way. They are some kind of the effective working or some kind right. of the activity they are doing. Right. To the, your human beings or mm -hmm. to other things. So yeah, I think Faulkner yeah. understood that at a very early age. Right. So if you think about when he returned to Mississippi from Toronto, right. uh, he purchased a, a uniform, an That's army right. uniform, uh, RAF uniform, that was not the one he was given in training, but a nicer one, a fancier one, one more for an officer because, and he, he loved to wear that uniform around Oxford, sometimes with a cane and a limp, because he knew the power that the clothing could give to other people, and it changed the way people spoke to him yes. and saw him and understood him. Right. And so I think from a very early age, he's very, very aware of how powerful clothing can be. Yes, mm -hmm. your talk is very understandable, especially when it's coming to the US, you know? Mm -hmm. I, sometimes going to the antique shop in the, univer uh, mm -hmm. in the United States and uh, I found that every antique corner you can find the army's uniform, mm -hmm. you know. Yeah. And when you are looking at those kind of the army's uniform, it's actually talking to you. Mm -hmm. Some kind of the career of that person, you know, that wear. So, yeah. so it's a kind of sometimes very seems to be very new so it seems not so good to the yeah. <laughs> you know the hard area you know it's a kind of the uh, souvenir from the army to mm -hmm. the you know that ordinary life in a way so in such a way uh, the actually in america sometimes the things are very effective to all kind of the very persuasive to change the people's way of life, mm -hmm. and they are actually believing. People are always believing that such a kind of a way of the style is actually changing the world. You know, mm -hmm. that in such a way, the Americans' education or America's, uh, 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 you know, the uh, act uh, uh, economy mm -hmm. is now going in such a way. If you are creating some kind of the internet, the internet changes the world. Mm -hmm. you know? If you are inventing some kind of the way of the Facebook or the, some kind of the 3D, some uh, kind of the AI something, you know, such a kind of the thing happened, it maybe it will actually change the world. Mm -hmm. The American people change beliefs, but actually the other areas people, for example, maybe the Japanese readers or the other Asian areas readers or European readers, they also have some kind of the strong tradition about the uh, histories of the people's lives. Mm -hmm. you know? This is a very a kind of the historical fact, you know, and they do not actually believe in that. Just the changing the things does not change so much the weight of the past mm -hmm. or something. So in such a kind of the, from such a kind of the attitude, I sometimes feel that, you know, just talking about the clothes is a kind of a, you know, funny thing, you know. Mm -hmm. It's not so a uh, serious thing. So it is sometimes very, uh, it sounds very strange for me that uh, if you are looking at the English literature's tradition, mm -hmm. Thomas Carlyle actually talking about the famous essay, uh, talking about the clothes in his famous essay, you know, Tarto, the Tartos, mm -hmm. you know, and this humorous essay may suggest that clothing is connected to everything. It yes. sounds very, uh, you, it's a very humorous exaggeration, I think. Mm -hmm. it's okay, it's, that's okay. So, it, and it, I always feel such a kind of the exaggeration is a very 
uh, British style humor, you mm -hmm. know. Oh, it's okay. I know that such a kind of the way of the saying in yeah. the British people, but you are actually taking it a little more seriously. That's right. right? Yes. You know, and it, it's uh, a joke, but it's, it's also a, joke, uh, a lot of truth to it. Truth to it, and yeah. you want to try to explain or try to include it in a little more serious themes. Right. For example, the races, classes, mm -hmm. and the uh, clothing. Mm -hmm. And, and gender, gender yeah. right? You know, if you were, uh, you, so it is a little feel funny to, a, a little strange for me, you know. Your themes are very, very serious in a way. Mm -hmm. You are actually trying to, talking about the gender, trying to, taking up, talking about the cl classes, or what, races, mm -hmm. and the classes, and the, cl and the clothing. Mm -hmm. You know, these three things, for example, the gender, and the uh, races and the classes, these are very strongly connected to the uh, ourselves, you know, mm -hmm. and our identity, yes. very seriously. And mm -hmm. this is, we are always believing this is a kind of the fact, you know, and we should much more treat these things a little more serious way. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so I think that uh, this is a little strange three areas you are taking, because uh, the race is very strange for me sounds because especially because the race is uh, strongly related to the identity and not to related to such a kind of the surface mm -hmm. of the people like the clothing. So from my point of view, maybe the ethnicity might be better to talk about uh, clothing rather than the race. Mm -hmm. So why you are focusing on these three areas, you know, the gender, race, and the clothes, mm -hmm. and the uh, classes in your book? Okay, yeah, yeah. The, in, I think in Faulkner's time, race was the biggest issue in yeah. his time and place. Uh, in the South and in the, the 30s, the 40s, the 50s, race was the, the dominant issue uh, in the U.S., and especially in the South at that time. In other countries, of course, probably... Uh, race would be not so much of a of a factor and you wouldn't maybe study clothing or anything else in relation to race but for Faulkner's time and place and he's very concerned with race in his fiction yeah. so it made sense there right. and like you said gender race and class are three of the most important factors in our identities mm -hmm. um, in the modern world or at least it's the th three of the factors that we pay the most attention to mm -hmm. in literary studies and in cultural studies. Yeah. So it made sense to organize the book around those three topics and see how clothing is not only the, a surface level thing, it's wow. most obvious as a surface level uh, component, but that it actually has deep connections to fundamental parts of our identity, mm -hmm. uh, things like gender, class and race, but also our, our conceptions of ourselves uh, are tied to clothing. Um, clothing can be used to express your inner self mm -hmm. to the world, but also as kind of a, a shield mm -hmm. to protect your inner self from mm -hmm. the world. So right. it has versatile and even opposite uses that it can have. Uh, so it's very complex, actually, mm -hmm. the way clothing can work. And Faulkner, I think, uses that complexity mm -hmm. uh, in his fiction. Okay, so I think, you yeah, know, so clothing, you are trying to create clothing, a kind of a little more complex yeah. stage for the communication or some kind of the interwoven existences mm -hmm. between the human beings existence with the other side of the world, you know, of right. the society or so forth. And so it is a very, uh, yeah, I, I understand about, you know, clothing is also a very uh, important thing for us. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, in almost near to the end of the argument, you are mentioning that uh, a kind of a curious argument, you know, it is that you are insisting that the other elements, for example, the animals and the objects are also considered to be the important items you know, mm -hmm. for the social relationship. Okay, so you are now expanding a little more, you know? Uh -huh. yeah. So how the animals and the objects are related to people's or culture or uh, clothing? Okay, yeah. yeah. 
Um, I think I was trying to s suggest how um, clothing is one non-human thing yeah. that has a lot of influence on humans and society. But there's lots of other objects mm -hmm. or lots of other non-human things, such as animals, yeah. that you could also study as having effects on uh, human relationships and mm -hmm. human actions right. and intentions. And there's been a lot of attention in Faulkner to some of the animals. Uh, the bear, for instance, uh, in Go Down Moses, would, and the dogs in Go Down Moses have probably gotten the most attention in terms of uh, the, in the field of uh, animal studies. Um, and objects, I think you could do something similar with what my book does with clothing with lots of other objects. You can, you can probably think of objects yourself in Faulkner's work that have a huge influence on how humans behave. That's good. Uh, guns would be an obvious mm -hmm. one. But also, for example, maybe uh, the metal detector that Lucas uses in mm -hmm. Go Down Moses mm -hmm. uh, and tricks the salesman with the metal detector. Right. Uh, that metal detector does a lot of influencing of the humans around them. Right. Um, and so it's not just humans being the ones doing the acting on others. Sometimes it's objects, right. and it could be literal, like the metal detector. Sometimes it's more symbolic. Mm -hmm. um, if you think of the when Ike has the, the compass and the watch mm -hmm. and the gun that he has to relinquish and go down Moses before he can see the bear, a little bit more symbolic use of objects. Maybe, in uh, for example, the air. that automobiles, you know. Automobiles is a, is a great uh, one, planes. and airplanes, okay, yeah. that's right. Um, so these machines are also a very effectively yeah. work. They yeah. show some kind of the non-human communication yeah. with the human. Okay, Quentin's watch great. would be another good one. Right? <laughs> okay, that's yeah. true, yes. Yeah, so, so you, there's objects everywhere in Faulkner that mm -hmm. um, are exerting influence on the humans around them. Right. Yeah, I realize that uh, your argument is expanding much more mm -hmm. about the Faulkner's world and the Faulkner's item. Thank mm -hmm. you very much. Okay, thank uh, you. I, I really enjoyed, enjoyed talking to you. I really enjoyed to read that again.